Football games aren't the most popular of subjects, and don't make for the most popular of videos, and that fact will never stop me talking about them. I love old football games of all shapes and sizes, hell I've spent so much time playing the damn fins. And it is one of the biggest fins that's changed between the old days and now. Twenty or so years ago there were so many different football games. You weren't just restricted to Pro Evolution and FIFA, you had a massive choice. They weren't all great by any means, but geez, if you thought the 16-bit generation had a lot of footy games, the 32-bit era took the biscuit and banned it into the net from 30 yards. And so FIFA and Pro Evo's rise to a duopoly wasn't immediate, it took years, built off the backs of the bodies of all these forgotten footy games. And this video is a nostalgic whistle-stop tour through those bodies. A load of PS1 footy games, and a couple of PS2 ones too. They've all got plenty of quirks, more than enough to keep the interest up. Football games are important, and you'll damn well see that before I'm done. Of course, for a bit of context, it's good to briefly see just what the eventual Big Two were doing. It took quite a while for FIFA to find its feet in 3D, the first couple of iterations were actively terrible. I mean, just look at FIFA 96 here. A 3D pitch with 2D sprites? It's embarrassing. It took until the middle of the era for things to change. FIFA World to World Cup 98 was the first good one. This, however, is the best PS1 FIFA for me. FIFA 99. It still plays a bit like the original FIFA, with stupidly powerful shots and what have you, but it's got all the tricks on the shoulder buttons, which is nice, as well as stuff you don't have today, like the good old vicious tackle option. I miss the days when, either through accident, adrenaline or sheer frustration, you could shatter a goalie's legs with a Roy Keane-esque cruncher and get an immediate red card. I loved FIFA 99 back then for how blisteringly fast it played, something that the game doesn't really do anymore that still makes it a game worth playing. The game was arguably never this breakneck again. These were the formative days of FIFA becoming what we know and watch people smash their TV screens at today. The arrival of real players, of top level presentation, and most importantly, John frickin' Motson. It's a plush package for the time and the football's damn good. Konami, however, were the first to hit gold, back when Pro Evolution was but a glint in their eye. International Superstar Soccer Pro from 1996 is outstanding and had so much over FIFA. The sheer immediacy of it, loading it up and getting into a match in about a minute flat, and a clever mix between simulation and more arcadey play. No real players, of course, but then FIFA didn't even have those when this was out. ISS Pro is a bit slower than the FIFA 99 we've just seen, but it flows so well, and it was one of the first footy games to properly introduce the all-important through pass. If you can get past the early 3D, it's still a really strong footy game. Of course, these days it's mostly famous for the staggeringly awful Alan Partridge-esque commentary that I've made fun of hundreds of times before, and I'm about to do so again. Just listen to this. Well, the goalie had to save that one. That boy's got a steel scar. It's 2-0. Now, I pay to watch football like that. Great skill being shown. In the air, deep from the right. Perfect clearance off his head. He's over. And that was a start-up tackle if ever I saw. That's a dangerous looking position. No missing. Straight for goal. Off the bar. Oof. Eat my goal. Let's see some attacking. It's nail-biting stuff. Scorchio. It's off the woodwork. It's a keeper's ball. Either team could still take this game. Perfect clearance off his head. And he scored! There's only one full minute of normal time to go. After that, it's down to the... There's only, there's only one full... Score! ISS had awful commentary in general. It would take until the PS2 years and the dulcet baritone of Peter Brackley for that to become even close to bearable. Still bloody good games, mind you. The battle between EA and Konami, however, one which Konami was winning comfortably, was but the tip of the iceberg. There were so many other football games, and they were far from cheap also rants. Some of them were just as big, if not bigger, than the big two. Some of them are even really good. And obviously some of them are awful. Chances are most of you will have played at least a couple of them. So let's go down into the Undercroft and look at the fallen goal-scoring superstar heroes. It would be flat out rude not to start with one of the first and biggest, Gremlins Actua Soccer. 
Indeed, this was the very first full 3D football game on consoles, with 3D players and everything. Actua Soccer was released in 1995, but I'm playing the club edition from 1996, which features every team from the 96-97 Premier League season, and nothing else, which is kind of a swizz actually. It is weird to play a football game where there's only 20 teams. The game itself is pretty bare bones, but it's not all that bad, it runs smoothly, which is a surprise. It's okay in most departments, including controls, nothing fancy, but it's all there. And there's Barry Davis on commentary. Sure, he's way too quiet and you can hardly hear him, but he is there. For the first ever 3D footy game on a console, Actua Soccer is all right. While it was soon passed by ISS Pro, it's a hell of a lot better than some of the other games we're going to see. Unfortunately, the series as a whole just kind of got worse over time. Actua Soccer 2 was utterly slow and unresponsive compared to the frickin' original, which is kind of impressive when you think about it. It was really not good, especially when compared to other games on the market. Actua Soccer had an important role in the beginning, but that was it. And when Gremlin was brought up by Infogrounds in 1999, Bruno Bonnell's company decided not to continue Actua Soccer, or indeed Gremlin's Actua Sports line as a whole. So it goes. Here's another one that might be familiar. This is Football, which was Sony's own football game made by one of their in-house studios, Team Soho. This is the first one from 1999 and it's pretty good. It's certainly made okay and that's hardly a given with these games. It has its own little quirks like having to tap the sprint button instead of holding it, making that a bit harder than it is usually. You can't just turn around all over the shop when sprinting. Other than that, there seems to be bits of FIFA here, shoulder buttons for tricks, and a general ISS feel to boot. It's certainly not a bad game and I can at least see why someone would go for this game over the big two, even if it was always disadvantaged by coming out so much later. But in spite of that, and likely because Sony were behind it, this is football lasted a long while. There were six TIF games all through the PS2 era, with the final one coming out in 2005. And I've got that too. This is Football 2005 is, yeah, it's alright still. The controls in this are very much like FIFA's, but again, with quirks. The game is still rocking the deliberate foul or get a player sent off option. And you can even dive in this game. As an aside, it's hilarious how FIFA has basically never had a dive option. Even Pro Evo didn't until recently. Again, it's the football that some don't want to admit exists. It's all pretending that football's a game where everyone smiles, and that adverts where Neymar goes back to the favelas to have a kick about every month are real. <laughs> Bullshit. It's about winning, any way you can. Winning, and money, and fucking diving. The thing that a supporter will accuse every single team of doing, but will never admit that their own team do it. Of course, diving is very hard to actually do convincingly in TIF and will usually result in a yellow card, but at least it's there. Like a little Michael Owen sitting on your shoulder saying, Go on, go on, do it! For the most part, I enjoy the football in TIF 2005. My only real complaint is that if anything the game is too fast, which can make it feel a bit too jerky. All the usual components are fine however, the AI isn't wholly stupid, and the game doesn't feel like it's working against you. Still a big problem in footy games today, that one. It's good to see that the series got considerably better over time, rather than worse like Actua did. And Peter Drury is amusingly shite on commentary. But alas, this is football never stood a chance. It was the last of its race, and it's amazing it lasted as long as it did, quite frankly. By this time, FIFA was at the commercial top, and Pro Evo was the one true alternative, and it was miles better than FIFA. This is better than contemporary FIFAs too, but not better than Pro Evo. And so it was always a distant third that never sold well or performed well critically. The Ralph Nader, the Jill Stein, the Nigel Bloody Farage if you wanted to be a twat about your analogy. The series made it through the PS2 generation, but it would not come to the PS3. And when This Is Football died, it was a two-party race from then on. Depressing, isn't it? Up next, we go back. Back to the PS1, and to Psygnosis's Adidas Power Soccer. This is an odd early one from 1996. Not good in the slightest, but it has some weird fins about it. Like the big trails that come from your player when you squint. 
or being able to push the shit out of the opposing players. And everybody's favourite, the Mega Shot. Even if you fire this straight at the keeper, they'll fall down and the ball will trickle into the goal. Something tells me that this game didn't take football all that seriously. To be honest, you're basically forced into doing all of this. Trying to play football normally is terrible, and will result in being endlessly intercepted and you desperately hacking away at the ground in order to get the ball back in a purely unfun manner. Commentary is provided by a bored sound in Brian Moore, but there is a cheat for female commentary. I seem to recall this being a bunch of shouty women yelling a lot, and endless jokes about not knowing the offside rule that would have made any fucking large shake his head in disgust. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on my version for whatever reason. The game doesn't exactly run great on my PS3. There were a couple of other games in the series that were a bit more serious, but they're not that worth looking at. This wasn't even close to Actua Soccer in terms of quality, and it makes for a rather silly but disappointing showing from Psygnosis. Sports just weren't their back, simple as that. Switching to PS2, here's the one true landfill game of PlayStation football, Club Football by Codemasters. How do you make sure your game appeals to as many people as possible? Why simply release 22 versions of the same game, each one only differentiated by the club badge on the front and some of the graphics in the intros and menus. And then do the same again for the sequel. And make an official England team version that's the same game only under a different name. Club football was made to dominate the shelves of your local CEX, whole rows of them, all there, ranging from the utterly common Manchester United game that's worth a penny, to the ultra super duper mega rare Birmingham City game that's worth, um, probably about a penny too. Supply and demand, folks. Still, there must be someone out there who is utterly proud of their full CIB sealed club football collection that they've just sent to the Video Game Authority for grading. This game is like a full-on shotgun blast in terms of marketing. One of those pellets is going to get you. And if it does, you'll have made a big mistake. Club football is complete trash. A completely unresponsive football game filled with so many things that inspire hatred. For example, you can never do a small pass to the player next to you. You just have to pass to someone 15 yards away all the time, and of course it'll get intercepted. Or how about being endlessly fouled by the computer for a half and then the first time you foul your player gets sent off? Okay, maybe that's just bad luck and sour grapes talking, but holy god damn it, this game is cheap and nasty to play. Club football is, well, an interesting marketing strategy, that's for sure, one that no one's ever tried to repeat, but a pretty crappy football game by any stretch. World League Soccer 99 then. This was another fairly major one by Eidos this time, with Michael Owen on the front. Woohoo! He's even got a little bit of FMV at the beginning, the best start up to any game for my money. Welcome to Michael Owen's World League Soccer 99. Have fun. Doesn't his clear enthusiasm make you want to play the game? The only way you could have any more fun than this is if you were, I don't know, creosote in your fence or something. Anyway, the game itself is basically okay. It's graphically decent for the PS1, you can score some decent goals, everything works fine. Essentially, it's competent. By which I mean that while everything is good and all that, something about the game is just that little bit boring and you wish you were playing ISS instead. A bit like Michael Owen himself, really. Free Lions. Free fucking Lions. Released in 1998 by ZXS and Take Two, this is the official England team game, coinciding with, of course, France 98. The whole thing brings back so many memories. The bloody thing was hyped to hell, even meriting a front cover on the official PlayStation magazine. For a football game that isn't FIFA or ISS, and is in fact hilariously shite. This is pure grain nostalgia. It was on the demo disc too, so you'd play it loads, wondering each time why it was on the cover because it was so bad. It's even got 100 Mile High City by Ocean Colour Scene in the intro video, which is the best thing about the game. It reminds you that Sonic exists, so you log straight onto Spotify and listen to it five times in a row in order to put off playing the game some more. It couldn't be more 1998. Ocean Colour Scene even sponsored the damn thing. 
Anyway, what's frustrating is that actually, Three Lions comes close to being good. It doesn't move badly at all. I mean, the players are as ugly as you'd expect, but moving them around and passing it isn't all that bad. It's a quick and neat game in the middle of the field. But just like Emil Heskey, everything falls apart when you get inside the box. The shooting, my god. So, you get a target on the goal. When you press shoot, you have to move it into position, which is difficult enough because it's so bloody sensitive. As you're doing this, your player winds up to take the shot in slow motion. Unfortunately, none of the opposing team does the same, so they've got roughly a full minute to take the ball off you while you're shooting. If by some miracle you get a shot off and it's actually on target, then maybe you'll score. Although in all likelihood you'll spray the ball out wide, or just hit it straight at the goalie. Although if you do that you might score anyway, as this little clip shows. The CPU isn't exactly strong in the box either, meaning that most matches in three lines end up goalless. At least there's extra time and penalties options even if you're just doing a friendly. You can remedy things a little by switching up the camera from its terrible default setting that turns when you get near the box making it impossible to judge anything, but that's only a minor help. Goals just seem to happen through luck while someone from your team shouts your crap at you. Actually I think it's gets back, but my mishearing's funnier. Still, the memories. My god. As far as shit 90s football games go, while there may be worse ones than three lines, it's the one that immediately sticks out in my mind. It certainly deserved to be the official England team game, that's for sure. Indeed, there are worse ones than three lines. Much worse. Here's Olympic Soccer, the official footy game for Atlanta 1996 with the name that strikes fear into many on the front, US Gold. They're the people who brought you the classic World Cup carnival on the spectrum, so it must be brilliant. This is, well, hilariously terrible. For a start, I know that I shouldn't criticise graphics too much, but, well, this looks horrifying even back then. The players are like stickmen who got some big ideas, seriously. It might be a good contender for the single worst looking game on the PS1, full stop. I'm not sure if the people who made the game actually knew how 3D worked, to be honest with you. But hey, they did get Alan Green, the voice of football on the radio, to do the commentary, and he truly put all his heart into his performance, as you're about to hear. Whack! Oh, headed too close to the goalkeeper. Stun! A brilliant save! For Hidalgo. It's a scissor! Look at this once more, wasn't it wonderful? You know, it's at moments like this when a commentator really appreciates how lucky he is. Think, someone's actually paying me to be here. Calvera, a great save! This game kind of reminds me, what with the massive aftertouch and flying moves you can do anywhere, of a botched 3D version of the 16-bit game Fever Pitch Soccer, and that wasn't good to begin with. There is one fun thing about it though, scoring is so easy because the goalies are beyond stupid. With only a little bit of practice, you can curl one in from the frickin' halfway line. So it's almost fun to play this just to try and score some absolutely ludicrous goals. The game can do that, no problem. But yeah, it's awful. In that amazing US gold type of way. It's kinda sad actually. Just imagine some of the other shit that they could have put out in the PlayStation era if they'd had the chance. Alas, by the end of 1996, US Gold had been merged into IDOS Interactive, and we would never see that glorious label again. This is one of their very last titles. One day, I guess, we'll end up looking at a lot more of them. Would be rude not to, wouldn't it? Okay, Viva Football. This is one I really wanted to like. It's such a likeable concept. In Viva Football, you can restage every World Cup from 1958 to 1998 including the qualifiers. There's over a thousand national teams in this game, and you can pair them up against each other too. Brazil 82 vs Holland 74, Argentina 86 vs England 66, Burkina Faso 90 vs Luxembourg 98, you name it. What an awesome concept. A dream match football game, truly for the devoted fans and students of the game's history. I almost bought it back in the day. It is a shame then that on playing it now, I'm pretty thankful that I didn't. Viva Football just feels won. It's a very tough footy game, but tough for all the wrong reasons. Like the player selection being terrible, or the massive delay on a freaking pass, or the ball moving on the ground like it's on an ice rink, 
or the incomprehensible shooting. It's a game where you just hack, hack away and it's nearly impossible to score. Hell, it's a challenge even to regain possession. And it's not a nice challenge when everything about the game feels like it's working against you and the football on the whole is just gruesomely ugly. It's such a great concept and so much work went into that concept. I can't imagine the hours that went into compiling every single team from 40 years of World Cup football. I just wish that some of those hours had also gone into making a decent footy game. Of all the ones I have though, in the end, this is the worst of them. Onside Soccer, made by Elite in 1996. There's nothing funny about this game's brand of shite, it's all just incompetent rubbish. The most interesting thing about the game is the intro video. I mean, look at the place. See how run down it is? Everywhere's closed? This is England, right here. Everyone's unemployed, everything's grey and hopeless and fucking shit. Except the stadium. Everyone lives only for Saturday afternoon at 3pm. Mind you, looking at the place, I bet the team's doing rubbish too. They probably used to be in the top flight back in the 70s, maybe even had a cup win at League Cup, not FA Cup. But then Thatcher closed the entire town down and now the team's in Division 2 and on the verge of going bankrupt. Basically, it's Sheffield United, the video game. Starring Sean Bean. What a way to advertise your football game, though. No glittering prize, no Sky, no Premier League. You can't hide the harsh reality. This is football, the true opium for the masses, the one thing in life that can, however fleeting, offer a little sliver of hope. I hope that every single person in this intro video has better days in front of them. But of course, the football is dire. It's sort of like the 16-bit game Striker, only really jerky and bad with confusing controls. I've never seen a power bar like this where you manage to get it up to 3 quarters strength and the player still lightly taps the ball a few millimetres in front of him. Passing is broken, kicks as a whole are broken, tackles… you get the idea. Even an indoor football mode can't save this game. If anything, that's the worst bit because… well, it's broken. Like the town. There's a big management side to the game too, but I somehow don't think that the game's magically going to get better through watching the god-awful AI hack lumps out of the turf. For me, this is it. A lot of these games are comically bad, but this? It's just depressing. It makes me want to listen to the fucking enemy on repeat, and if a game does that to me then it can't not be total dog shit. It's 24th place, 20 points dropped due to administration, no wins, record lowest score of the season, 9-0 away from home, stone cold rock bottom. Okay, that about wraps it up for this time out. Of course there's plenty more football games than this in both the PS1 and PS2 generations, and I don't think I'm ready to stop here either. I'm sure that I'll make another video like this in the future. But for now, Hopefully you enjoyed this guide to the best and worst football games of 20 years ago. There's nothing more nostalgic than really old sports games, so do please leave your own memories in the comments below. Until then, from myself and the rest of the team, or just myself again, it's goodbye. Thanks very much for watching this video that's all about PlayStation football. If you liked the video, please do like it, please consider subscribing, and also following me on my Facebook and Twitter, as well as supporting me on Patreon. You will be loved for it. Now, for the final time, because I'm going to do something a little different from here on in, it's time for the last sin song, so let's go. Jason Leach, Martin Pataki, Taylor Armand, Mark Johnston, Twisted Squirt, L. O'Brien, J. Kelwich, Keith Barlow, Romeo, Peter Zidon, Grant Butler, Vishadi, Tiago Pereira dos Santos Silva dos Santos Silva, Olaf Holbein, Dragon Sex Master, Joel Hartman, Phil Taprog, Ben Coker, Jamie Hampshire, Lee Norris, and grief and black poor. Thank you all so much. And also there are these people to thank. Tim Lintz, Robert Kelly, Marco, Gianni Jacetta, The Amigos Amiga Podcast, Richard Bearwell, Hagenator, Radek, Ken Barraclough, 
Kenneth Bergen, Alvaro Gonzalez, Jamie Davenport, Johan Eriksson, Stephen Hornsby, Jan Best, Robin Banks, Dan Rusko, Christian Earnshaw, Francisco Pimenta, Kev Gilmore, Alexander Green, Thomas Daniels, Greg Olson, Mark Johnson, Stuart Ashen, Lee Harris, James Itt, Novel, Gerard Morris, Mike Siegler, Mark Brooks, Ed Reader, Russell Hugo, Graham Kamak, Scott Mitten, Nicole Ketchum, Ninth Demon, Ludwig Holmstrom, John Ezell, and Kit Leary. Thank you all so much for your support, I love you all. Okay, next time we'll have a little profile of a certain man who has been covered before who is probably quite familiar to just about all of you. It's time to go back to good old Sir Uncle Clive. But until then, I shall be saying goodbye. So, wherever you are and whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>